Hey guys, Stripter here. Today I'm going to try to answer a question for you on why does the Constitution matter? It's obviously inspired by the Las Vegas shooting and the increased desire to ban guns, either constitutionally or unconstitutionally, because some people think that we should simply ignore the Constitution because it's an old, outdated, and somewhat irrelevant document and just ban the guns to make ourselves safer. Defenders of guns fall in two camps. One camp is roughly, but my guns, and the other camp is, the Constitution says I can have guns so you can suck my Glock. Today I want to talk about why this matters, but outside of the whole gun debate issue, just from a legal precedent issue, and the gun debate is just a fantastic example, and I want to talk about why it matters today outside of the guns rights issue. We're not actually going to talk about guns rights too much, we're going to talk about what makes the Constitution so important, and why we're still adhering to it 250 years later. And before we go in too deep, yes, the Constitution is totally amendable, it's a living document, as you say, we can repeal an amendment, we can add amendments so we can do a lot of different things with it if it's what the majority of the people want. The gameplay you're going to get to see today is a lot of Call of Duty World War II gameplay. I'm using the WAF 28, which is, when, well, once you put steady aim on it, it's kind of the god gun for PC. It's like a rapid fire meme cannon, and I'm going to be murdering some people. Probably have a little PUBG and Overwatch in there as well. But let's talk about the Constitution. This document is the foundation of law and precedence from which all decisions flow in the United States because it's kind of our ultimate record reference point for right and wrong in the land. If the United States were a house, the Constitution would quite literally be the foundation on which the rest of the house is built, and that's kind of how it works in our law. It's the foundation and everything is built out of it. The easiest way for me to think about it is what is a standard pound or kilogram of weight? You can't really see it. It's hard to measure. It can't really feel it. If you don't trust your scales, if you're building scales, you need an original reference point in which to build new things or calibrate objects objects, and the Constitution is kind of that thing. If you're making weights for weightlifters and you make your 10-pound weights and you're thinking, well, I mean, I think I've made 10 pounds, the scale says that, but what if my scale is wrong? Who built the scale and how do they do it? You can take your 10-pound weight, come to a scientist that has the original unit measurement in storage, compare, and if it's too high or too low, you can discard and you can do it again and get it just right to make sure that it all fits. Many nations have such founding documents, constitutions, charters, the Magna Carta, there's religious documents, there's agreements of federation and corporation, sometimes it's a treaties. In other cases, it's people, divinity, they claim to have been chosen by God, or ruling class literally claims power through their own power. But in every single government structure, power flows from somewhere, and in our case, it is from this document. Our document, our Constitution, is unique for being one of the very first to empower and protect citizens from government. I know the Magna Carta was earlier, and typically these documents tend to empower governments and make governments the sort of source of authority. Ours, for the most part, does the opposite and makes the citizens the authority. Our founding document granted broad freedoms of religion, speech, property, affiliation, uh, that means what political party you join, assembly, who you can group with, uh, travel, weapons, and all sorts of other things. Each one of these broad freedoms has been abused more than once. There's lots of fake religions that people create for tax benefits to skip work. There are people that make fake religions so that they can claim they can smoke all the weed they want. There's people that use religion as a money laundering front. When it comes to speech or belief idea, there's lots of dangerous ideology out there such as Nazism, hate speech, encouraging violence on others, all of these while free speech are still an abuse of that right. Uh, affiliation is the same thing. Nazism, Ku Klux Klan, ISIS, very violent political ideologies you are allowed to join for the most part. Even when it comes to rights of affiliation or who you can group with, rallies and marches often turn violent every single year. People abuse their property rights every single year. And in the case of this video, every single year tons of people are killed by guns. So you would say, well, if all of these things are abused, if our rights are so detrimental to us, why do we have them? Why can't we just ignore them and fix all the problems? You're not alone. Every single time something bad happens, like uh, a big protest turns violent or a shooting, there are many people that I see, all the way from the lowest level YouTube commenter that can't spell, up to our highest level of politicians suggesting that we should simply ignore the Constitution and pass some law or take some action to fix the problem. And most of the time, this, their suggestions for fixing the problem are very good for that specific issue. Again, in the case of guns, if we simply remove 
removed all of them, there would be way, way, way less gun deaths. However, broader applications of the precedent of simply ignoring the Constitution are a nightmare the likes of which I hope to never see. You can take a step back in time a couple hundred years to the childhoods or maybe the childhoods of the parents of most of the people that would end up writing the Constitution in the 16 and 1700s in colonial America. You can also apply these rules broadly to Europe. It varies a little bit from location to location. But there were lots of crimes that you could be punished for that would seem very absurd today. For instance, simply being part of the wrong religion would be illegal. And by religion, I don't mean that it would be wrong for you to be Muslim while living in a Christian Christian nation, I mean that it would be wrong for you to be the wrong type of Christian in a Christian nation. You might be Catholic living in a Protestant nation. Even if you're in a Protestant nation, it could be that you need to be Puritan, Anglican, Quaker, Church of England, whatever it is that is the ruling power in that area. If you were not part of that very specific sect, religious group denomination, it could be punishable by anything up all the way to death. There were people that were punished for sitting under an apple tree during the Sabbath because the apple tree symbolized the tree of knowledge from which Eve ate the apple and caused the fall of mankind, and that was considered symbolically wrong on Sunday. Any sort of kissing or PDA in public could be punishable. In some places in the colonies, it was a requirement to bear arms. It wasn't a right. It was that you were literally required to master firearms every single male was. Political affiliations can be illegal depending on your locations. You may not be allowed to join a political party. You can see this in China, typically, where there's one political party that you're allowed to be in, or or any other sort of group. There were people that were not free to travel as they see fit. You couldn't move from colony to colony to city to city. You were tied to your location. You might need a permit or permission to leave. Property, in some instances, could be considered community property and never truly yours. You might be allowed to use it, take care of it, and kind of act like you own it, but you might not really ever own it and it could be taken from you at any moment. There were even public dress codes. We still have those today with decency laws and nudity, but there were such crazy laws as wearing the wrong color clothes, not fitting in with other people, wearing the wrong colors on the wrong days. There were lots of crazy laws, and the worst of them being the religious laws and the political affiliation laws and they sucked for everyone, except maybe for the small group of people that were in power creating these laws, but it wasn't a fun way to live. And that's why the writers of our Constitution worked super hard to empower citizens to do, say, and believe whatever they saw fit. As long as it wasn't inherently harming another person, you were allowed to be your own person, free to any sort of political affiliation, religious beliefs, uh, way you dress, way you travel, what you own, how you spend your money. It was more or less unrestricted. They also designed it to where any future laws had to conform to the what I would call strictly broad guidelines of the Constitution. There's very broad guidelines on what you cannot do and the precedent, both legally, culturally, politically, any kind of L-Y word that you can make for the last 250 years has been to adhere to this Constitution and to these incredibly broad freedoms. If tomorrow we simply start ignoring these rules and just doing kind of whatever we want, we make it completely illegal to be a Nazi, it's illegal to be racist, it's illegal to be a Muslim, That's that would be a pretty popular one here in the U.S., it's illegal to own guns, good example, it's illegal to do a lot of these different things, and we just kind of ignore the Constitution, because it's old, it's dusty, it's irrelevant, muskets aren't rifles, it doesn't matter anymore. What we do is we kind of erode the power of these precedents and we set a much broader and wider precedent of ignoring our rules of laws and our foundational documents. And in the future, it might be okay to roll back some of those other rules as well. It might be not okay to criticize the government or any government official. It could eventually become illegal to join certain political parties that typically starts with the smaller ones and works its way up to the bigger ones to where there's only one party left. Imagine if you could be a registered Republican or nothing at all. It could simply be a racial thing as our demographics shift and we continually erode the Constitution to our own benefits and by we I'm saying white people in this example and then all of a sudden the Spanish population explodes, they're the majority and since we have a precedent of doing so they could just make it to where only Spanish Americans are legal citizens. You can do the same kind of thing with religion, any religion that gets big enough. If we erode the religious laws to the point where they're meaningless then let's say Scientology could be the only religion and you're all required to participate punishable by death. 
In some crazier examples, you may not be permitted to leave town. You literally might need a government permit to leave town or travel freely. Or you may not be allowed to own anything, literally. You might be sort of uh, subsistence farming, renting from the government. The protections that they put in place are very broad and strict for a reason, and we have been strictly adhering to them to protect our freedom and to prevent a slip backwards into the past. We adhere to these guidelines very strictly in order to avoid any of the aforementioned scenarios, even when it comes to mass murders and guns. It is my opinion, and the opinion of many other Americans and American lawmakers, that 50 people dead in a mass shooting is not as bad as mandatory church attendance punishable by death by burning at the stake. I know that's an extreme example, but if we simply ignore part of our foundational law, we erode the power of the others to safeguard us. However, all of that being said, the Constitution is what they call a living document. It is designed to be amendable. The rights and freedoms and things that I said are literally amendments, the first ten. The amendments can be done through Congress, through our representatives. It can be done via regular citizens' initiative. So if enough people in America want to ban guns because they feel that that rule makes their future safer and more secure, then it can be done. There's lots and lots of ways to amend the Constitution, and that would be by far the safest, smartest, and and best way to make the changes to the document to fit the will of the people because you do so in a way that doesn't erode the power and protections of all the other good things in the document because while the document is very important it is not sacred or the word of God it was made by men and these men that wrote it knew that they were flawed and they designed it in a way to where it can be also changed by men Guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.